I should probably turn my camera off for the sake of the recording. I'm jealous of people, any of you guys who are in southern Utah. About this time of the year, I'm always like, maybe I should move to St. George. <laughs> I wonder who's on, are, are a lot of folks on spring break this week? Anybody on spring break? I know that that uh, kind of jostles around that first week of April or so, the last little bit of March. Starts tom tomorrow. What day? What, what? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah. My kids will be here with me all week. I'm actually looking for a place to take them. Who here has, who here can uh, promote their part of the state to, for me to take my two kids? Who's got the darkest skies? I want them to see, <laughs> I want them to see stars. I want them to get off their tablets, off their ed tech devices. Bryce, oh, oh, yeah. What's the temperatures down in Bryce these days? Is it cold? Oh, I should be putting people more. It's not too bad. It's in the 40s. Oh, well, that's not any different than what we're at right now. And most of the snow melts pretty quick, so it's not bad. Huh. Hello, all of you otter pilots. I'm wondering if there's a way that I can like, have you guys heard of uh, some of the things that you can do with AI to where they're um, like overloading, I think it is with some of the information so that it it like unlearns some of the stuff that it is absorbed or stolen and get, I don't know, it's, it's otter pilots going to be like, telling them information so that they get weird keywords that pop up like Heinz ketchup. <laughs> I catch up. Oh, St. George. My brother lives in St. George. All right. Well, I feel like we got a good, you know, statistically significant amount of folks here. We got 25. It's good to see all of you. I cannot believe that April is in a couple of days. That is ridiculous. Uh, we are just about ready to turn the corner um, and we're going to talk about some of that today. So Nicole's hanging out in the chat. Uh, if anybody's got some stuff they would like to bring up, uh, we'll get to uh, everybody's questions at the end. This one is being officially recorded. I can see on my computer, it says recording. I'm going to put it up. Don't worry about it. Okay. So it is March. It, well, it, it was March. March is done. Uh, hi, I'm John, and Nicole is hanging out with us as well. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, probably about, I don't know, looks like seven or so different topics. We're going to cruise through this real quick. Uh, so if you have any questions, like I said, save it for the end and or put it in the chat. But what we would really like you to do is join along. I'm going to, again, drop our link in the chat so that you can bookmark it, follow along, do whatever you need to, because our presentations are uh, active. Uh, they have rich text in them. So you can uh, click on the links and the different things that you need to. So let's jump down to our events. It, 20 days from now, we will be hosting our spring training session uh it is the other side of the calendar from our fall one that we do in person this one is virtual we uh if you are in the presentation right now you can click on this slide it will take you to the registration and or you can click on the registration down there at the bottom 20 days away from 9 30 a.m until 12 30 p.m as you can see here People that we are interested in inviting are data managers, which um, should be a majority of this group, metadata dictionary uh, managers, the folks maybe that you have delegated the SDPC and or uh, contract stuff to, uh, ISOs. We would like to get a lot more of the ISOs on board, especially when we want to bring uh, our colleague Jeremy um, into the fold and have more ISOs in this meeting as well. Um, 
the technology directors. We're going to discuss some of the new bills, talking about some misconceptions. I've got some gifts that I would like to give all of you. So please come and we will have Tooele District talk about Learn Platform a little bit, how they use that for their workflow. So click on that link. We'd love to see you. Uh, we're going to talk about the privacy compliance review. And I was bugging uh, Nicole in, the, in our chat. I was like, I need some updated statistics. And then I just went in and I clicked uh, refresh the table uh, in the graph. And I am floored. I don't know how many of you have been around for long enough to recognize that that number on the bottom, that 85.4% is unfathomable. I believe last year we were screaming through the ceiling at how excited we were at almost getting to 50% compliance statewide. We are currently at 85.4%. And if I had to guess, that 12.1% is just a sliver away, a sliver away. We are a sliver away from a 97.5% compliance rating keep in mind 2.5 percent we're working with them some of them have some struggles like internet and um just access to a lot of this i mean we all have different things different challenges and so we are trying to tailor a lot of our guidance and technical assistance to where you're at which leads us to Clicking the next slide. Next year's compliance check. Uh, our team had a meeting a couple of days ago about how we would like to format this, what things we want to look for. If you have any suggestions on things that maybe you need assistance with or things that we can help you with uh, um, going into the year, please let us know. Uh, but we are looking at this little um, box of dates uh, towards the end of the school year. So everybody's still there, but it's, you know, it's still got a little bit of the hustle and bustle. Maybe we're done with a little bit of the testing. Are there any dates out there in this realm that anybody knows of that conflict with this um, grid? potentially, uh, you know, a USIMS meeting or a something, something meeting or a conference or, or something. If there's something that's out there that you have on your calendar that conflicts with this, that we should be aware of, please let us know. Uh, if you have a preferred date and time or window, uh, please let us know. I mean, we may as well just uh, potentially pencil it in for this time, this slated time in May. So I don't know, Nicole, maybe uh, that's just the solution to the whole problem is to do our last Thursday in May. Uh, if that is something that conflicts with most of you uh, or, or a few of you, let us know. But I think that that's uh, where we're going to look for talking about how we want to make Utah continually compliant and ahead of the curve when it comes to data privacy. Uh, I wish and maybe I'll do that next month, but uh, I am going to be in Miami in two weeks talking to a bunch of folks around the country about how amazing uh, Utah is with our data privacy, um, student data privacy, and how mature we are. And I would actually like to maybe bring some of that presentation back to you so that you all can see why that 85% number is like... Anybody got like a really great adjective? <laughs> I went blank. Like, it's, it's, it's really like... I was on a call earlier today, and I believe that there are still five states, five out of 50, that have absolutely zero student data privacy laws on the books at all. Um, so we are in a really, really good space, um, which allows for things like this. Uh, our menu is going to be um, updated the uh, uh agreement menu that we have. Uh, it has not been updated since the end of November. Part of my head still thinks that, you know, it's the beginning of January and I have to remind myself that April is in three days. Uh, 
But as you can see here, these are agreements with vendors that have that are now subscribable in SDPC. So if these are uh, products that you have somebody in your agency that is interested in grabbing one of those, uh, it's available. Uh, some of you may see a couple on here that are kind of prized, I would say. Uh, one would be Minecraft. I see on there to a degree that the coding in Minecraft. I see the one that is hyperlinked. Magic School AI. Uh, if you guys want to talk about that, we can. But that is available to have a DPA, as is um, School AI. Uh, if you saw a lot of those and, and I'd like to ask, did a lot of your schools, maybe you can fill me in, in the chat. Uh, you set was last week. How many people had a bunch of teachers coming back to your schools and wanting a whole bunch of new stuff? If that is something that happens, if that is a part of this calendar, uh, let me know because maybe we can, uh, figure out a way to, uh, utilize some of our resources to inform the vendors at USET uh, to help them in um, conversations with the teachers so that uh, your teachers come back from uh, big conferences a little bit more uh, aware of the things that need to be done in the privacy realm before actually activating a lot of these really cool products. Um, oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, magic school's in. We're ready to go. Uh, kids read now. That's a little bit pixelated, but I will tell you this. Kids read now, in a weird roundabout way, has helped LEAs in this state become a little bit more cognizant of their data privacy practices in that they recognize that, or, or, or they're being told, from, from someone in their agency, we need a data privacy agreement for kids read now, right now. And they're like, oh my gosh, we need a data privacy agreement for kids read now. And so we've gotten, and Nicole, maybe you can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we've had about five, three LEAs join or, or at least begin using SDPC in the last uh, month or so just because of um kids read now and needing to get a dpa with kids read now if you are an agency that uh needs to secure a dpa with kids read now and you have yet to do so we can help you do it in probably five clicks maybe i think it's a five -click thing okay kids read now so if you need help with that uh let's help you get that set up that is something that will take place over the summer where uh students will be receiving books uh, my daughter was a recipient over the summer last summer, and, and, and she loved it. So uh, this is a great program. All righty, Whitney Wallace, I don't know if you're here, but if you are, hello. Uh, Whitney is going to be speaking at our fall or our, our spring training. She is uh, actually going to be leading the um, guidance on the Learn Platform workflow. Uh, how it works for Twilla, the lessons that they've learned, how they incorporate it with SDPC uh, and, uh, and utilize those two in, in conjunction with one another. So uh, if that's something that you'd like to use uh, or you'd like to learn a lot more about how Learn Platform functions in this space, uh, as well as how it functions really well in conjunction uh, with SDPC, with SDPC being kind of that back end electronic filing cabinet of data privacy agreements which you know if you if you don't have your data privacy agreements available on uh, SDPC then you know hopefully that you have a data privacy agreement that you could produce should a parent uh, ask for one for those of you that are on SDPC that is taken care of for those of you that are not or have your own proprietary systems Hopefully that that is something that uh, we can help you with. And remember, part of that metadata dictionary compliance is that whatever system you use, be it Learn, SDPC, a Google Sheet, or something that is proprietary, it needs to include the justification, the FERPA exception, and the purpose for using that product. Uh, if you have any questions on that, let us know. Uh, but Whitney is doing great things, and we're looking to hear from her in 20 days. 
Uh, we were asked to pass some of this along to you all, folks. If you are interested, the Student Privacy Policy Office and PTAC, who is uh, our national friends, PTAC. I don't know if uh, some of you know Ross from PTAC. His answer to every one of your questions is, it depends. Uh, these are some great trainings in regards to FERPA, in regards to data security, data breach preparedness. Uh, it is There are three days where they go into a lot of these, two hours a piece. Uh, as you can see, one of them falls day two, right at the end of our conference. Our conference uh, will end around 12.30 uh, p.m., where there's, as you can see, uh, will be beginning at 12 p.m. our time here in uh, Utah. So, and, and of course, I believe these are recorded and available later. If anybody knows, you can correct me. But this FERPA 101, 201, and the incident response are always amazing. If you can't do one or two, please try to take a look at three. Um, that incident response and vetting ed tech is something that everybody always has questions about. And, um, you know, Nicole, was it you that shared uh, that link? In our uh, Nicole is our, our resident uh, uh, data breach expert because she loves the podcast. <laughs> but uh, Nicole, would you like to tell our stakeholders here in this uh, space who was breached recently? Um, sure. Before I do that, I want to just clarify: they don't record oh, these webinars, but they do make the slides available after the fact, so you can look at the slides. But sometimes that's not helpful without the recording. Um, but if you haven't been following it, the news story that John is talking about is that CISA was breached, which is the cybersecurity people, the federal cybersecurity people. Um, and the breach was through some vulnerabilities in the Avanti products. So if any of you guys are using Avanti for networking um, and you haven't updated, there's information you can just Google. Um, Avanti and CISA and you can find the information about it or you can contact us for more details. Lovely. So everybody is subject to potentially getting breached, even the big boy. So having that break glass in case of emergency um drill that, that that exercise going through that with your team is great if there's anybody in the chat that has done that with their admin or um you know with some of their teams i know that that was something that we did kind of in a in a silly way uh last fall with the uh, breakout situation that i created but uh increasingly uh these are things that we need to be cognizant of and not something I think what what was it that Jeremy says that uh the some, oh, he was saying something about cybersecurity yesterday where you, you you jumping over a dollar to pick up pennies and and these are dollars that we need to be picking up right now is uh data breach response again for those of you that may not uh have joined us in the last couple of sessions our website has changed. We are uh, really poised to be helping out data managers and giving you access to all of the supplies and resources that we have created over the years. I would like to encourage you to come to our spring training because I think that you'll enjoy a lot of the work and effort that uh, Nicole and I have put into and, and the rest of our team into creating a space that can serve as a landing spot for all of your questions, all of your resources, and for those times where you have to volunteer or voluntold somebody else on your team to do this. And you may or may not have the bandwidth to onboard them. So we are creating spaces for everybody to be able to just fish for themselves, but we've got a really nice tackle box and we invite you to, uh, to look forward to that on the 17th. Uh, ISOs, again, we would really like to encourage ISOs to start participating in some of these conversations, especially when we talk about some of this higher end data breach stuff and some of the more technical things. 
Uh, but if anybody does have something that they would like to talk about, Jeremy is hoping that we can kind of prime some of that conversation before he can jump in with us. Uh, he also has a meeting that from time to time conflicts with this one. So having a little bit more um, meat for him to chew on in order for him to kind of give you uh, some stuff that you're looking for when it comes to uh, the security side of all of our privacy space. And, and Nicole uh, works with him quite a bit on all of that, uh, the cybersecurity side. So uh, please do not, do not hesitate. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I feel like in my, in my humblest opinion, that ISOs have kind of always been uh, the, the backup quarterback to the data manager, even though maybe some of you are the, are the same people, but we would like to get you both in the game and uh, get you equally uh, prepared to run all the plays. How'd you like that metaphor? Uh, and then there's the appointed records officer. And I like to talk about this from time to time too, to remind you, but data managers, ISOs and AROs are all the, you know, the three components of a really strong privacy infrastructure in your school. The AROs are, responsible for not just the student data, but they are responsible for employee data, for asset data, for administrative data, for all of the HR data. That's where, you know, employee social security numbers rise. So this is when we pull them in for a lot of our data retention. Uh, and so we would really like that the appointed records officers, the data managers, the ISOs are all talking about the shared um, responsibilities that they have to be good stewards of this. And we have created spaces for that. Uh, that's basically it. I've, you know, world record, 22 minutes, very few tangents, very few silly little dad jokes. Uh, you know, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, things that we can address? Uh, things that you have on the tip of your tongue that maybe you need somebody else to help out. We have a lot of really strong users in this room, from what I can tell. Uh, Selena is great. If you've got problems, ask her, Selena. Don't do anything well that you don't want to do again. Uh, on and on. Um, uh, Jumana, if you've got any issues with uh, your uh, LEAs, merging let's talk about that as we go forward into the next school year uh hey. otter pilots Hello. how are you all doing arf, arf, arf. yes go ahead <laughs> um troy wasn't able to make it to this meeting this is i was just he had a question to ask yeah we we are trying to subscribe um to we have a new agreement signed up with rocket math Okay. And so we went into SBDC and tried to originate the agreement to get it all put in. Mm -hmm. And it tells us that there is already an originating because it expires in October. Okay. And so it won't let us create enter that new agreement in because it says there's already an originating agreement for that resource. And that one won't expire for six months. And yeah, is it six months is the deadline? Well, well, the, the, well, in, in October, right? Is that what you said? It doesn't expire yes, in October. October. Yeah, so that's six months from now, right? Yeah, I thought so. Um, well, that's... It's kind of complicated. And what I'm going to say is what I heard, and, you know, I don't have a slide for this, but uh, next month that the NDPA version 2 will be released. Okay. Um, and it will come with a user guide. Now, what that means is, could we potentially start using the NDPA version two right away? Potentially, because here in Utah, we don't have any, uh, uh, as long as everything kind of crosswalks the same for us and our laws and everything, I don't see a huge barrier in Utah getting it approved. Some of the other states, feel like it may take them until like September in order for them to be able to use it because of all the other laws that they're dealing with uh, to, to, to use a new agreement. But, and the reason why I bring this up is there's a couple of factors. One, there are opportunities for us within the next, you know, six to 12 months for a lot of agreements that are um, expiring. 
Um, if we were to get new NDPAs using the agreement that we currently have, that agreement will only last for a total of three years, putting us to 2027, which, you know, that's fine. I mean, there's nothing super material in the agreements other than, you know, a lot of like verbiage and, and ways to display data and, and, and more like layers of accountability. Um, but all in all, you know, there is that opportunity that when Utah does officially say, okay, we approve this, we're going to use it, the NDPA version two does not have an expiration. So for districts like Iron and Alpine and Jordan that are high volume NDPA um, originators, this is great because it gives us an opportunity to uh, not have to renew, which we have seen over the last year and a half has been really difficult for folks. And then we run into situations like what we're talking about right now is that I don't want to sign on to an agreement. It's going to end in six months. I'd rather just get a new one that is proprietary to me. <laughs> Like, whatever, I want to be a part of the community and, and, and share this uh, agreement with everybody. But, you know, it, it, it runs into this weird thing. So I guess to not answer your question is there are a lot of factors, I think, at play here with us over the course of the next few months, depending upon how long it does. I mean, I've been talking about this agreement getting um, finalized, you know, the joke in our office is, it's Labor Day! <laughs> Meeting last Labor Day. But uh, they have said that, yes, it will be available at the end of April. So, for us, I don't know. I mean, I don't want, I mean, I guess theoretically what I'm saying is this, if you are signed on to that agreement that expires in October, your students are protected until then. So your students aren't in risk, you know, at risk. If you guys wanted to do a new one, the one that you've already done, uh, we can look at, you know, finding a way to see if the originator of the other agreement would like to just, um, you know, we can delete that and figure out a way to prop yours up as the new one and then ask everybody who's subscribing to subscribe to yours. Or we wait and see what the NDPA version two, I mean, it'll be out before that other one expires. So we can have an NDPA version two in the hopper ready to go in October, the second that that one expires, and then just go straight into an NDPA version two with rocket math, and then not have to worry about it. again. So I think that maybe if I was Troy, I would just hold off on the DPA that you have now live underneath the one that exists and then we as a state i you know and this kind of comes back to some of the you know privacy and where are you at but you know with the new agreement coming out it may behoove a lot of folks out there to look at the ones that you are currently subscribed to because some of them are old and i've been looking at them and some of them don't have a lot of fidelity uh so it may behoove all of the agencies to go back in once we get this new agreement and you know, update everything. So, uh, Nicole, I don't know if that answers your question, um, I but I think that maybe what's best to do is just wait and then ride into the sunset with the other. What do you think? Okay. Uh, Trey was really just kind of looking for what's the next step. So we just have to decide, like you said, whether talk to, we talk to Jordan School District or we just wait it out. Um, that's kind of what we're looking for is just an idea of what to do next. Yeah, I think... Like, I don't know, Nicole, what do you think? Do you think like waiting it out might be? I mean, I would probably say wait it out unless there's a really good reason besides just that it's like you've got this one ready to go and you'd like to just upload it now. But beyond that, I would say it's probably better to wait until the other one expires just because I think that deleting it early might cause some confusion for people yeah. who are subscribed to it and are 
either not paying attention to the deadline or if they are paying attention are thinking that they've got until October to do something different with it. But I know that makes it kind of a pain to like sit on this EPA that you have ready to go for the next six months. <laughs> yeah, and if he has any questions, he and I can talk about it. Um, but okay, yeah, I'm sure I mean, we can. Do as this far thing. as you know, open conversation goes. There, there you go. There's the the there, there's one of the gifts that you guys are getting in April. I believe is that we will have a new agreement. Um. Cool. And there will come over the summer, I believe, you know, and, and with that webinar in May, uh, how that impacts everybody, you know, does that change our workflow? Does that change, you know, that's going to change some of the instruction that Nicole and I provide to folks as far as, you know, using SDPC and, and then maybe like, you know, clicking here, clicking there. Um, but it'll be a good thing. And, and I think it'll be a good thing for a lot of us if we can look at what we already have in the registry and clean up stuff that probably is pre-2020. No mandate, no telling you or anything. But if I was a data manager and I had a DPA before 2019, pre-COVID, I would take a look at it and maybe see about getting a newer version just because it'll make my guts feel better and no other reason. Um, yeah, but the NDPA is going to be great. And I believe we'll be able to deploy it pretty quickly once it's released. Any other questions, comments, or concerns out there? If not, I will end this, I will post the recording, and I will sit and listen to the rain for the next half a minute. Are all of you comfortable with that? If so, type, yay, spring break rules, blah, in the chat. Or <laughs> Thank you guys so much. 85% is ridiculous. It only be done with you guys taking the time to be in this space thank you so much thank you thank you uh go somewhere warm get a little bit of a sunburn maybe eat some ice cream stub your toe because you're wearing flip-flops we'll see you on the 17th thank you so much